Today, I'm gonna to show you how I took these photos and my entire workflow behind the camera at the Sidemen charity match of 2022. But before we go any further, please hit that subscribe button. It just, it takes two seconds, guys. Like, come on. If you subscribe right now, I'll give one of you a free box of Krispy Kreme donuts, okay? That sounds like a good deal. Being given the chance to shoot some of the biggest entertainers on the planet, such as Mr. Beast and KSI, was such a huge opportunity for me, which is why I wanted to get to the location as early as possible so that I could find my way around the pitch, look at my shooting points, and kind of get familiar with the location. By doing this, it gave me plenty of time to speak to other photographers that were there, people that were filming, directors, security, just to ensure that I wasn't in anyone's way, and just so that the whole operation ran a lot smoother and and I knew where I could and couldn't be during the match. In terms of equipment, I was constantly running a two camera setup, which was my Sony a7R 3 as my main and my Sony a7 III as my secondary. I brought along with me a total of four lenses ranging from 400mm to 14mm. Now, this is a football match and I did think before the game started that a 70 to 200 just wouldn't have been zoomy enough and fuck me, I was right. But yeah, all of the photos that you're about to see are shot on the 100 to 400, combining that with the megapixel of the Sony a7R 3 which I believe is 42 megapixel, gave me enough room to crop into my images and still retain sharpness, especially shooting at f5 so i've seen quite a lot of football photographers usually locking their camera off on a tripod and just sitting in one position majority of the match like a sniper so what i did was not that i did not take a tripod with me what i did do was turn my camera into an m4 by putting this on the bottom of the lens and using it as sort of like a grip so by having this attached to my lens or having it as my grip I was essentially able to not have any shake during those panning shots, especially zoomed in at 400 mil, because I know at 400 mil, if you're trying to go handheld and you haven't got stabilization built into your camera, it's gonna be shake city. So we avoided that by this. So little trick for you guys, this on the bottom of the lens, make it into a little M4. At halftime, when everyone went back to the changing rooms, I actually backed up the first SD card, which I had shot on throughout or up to that point of the day. And I backed them all up on a Samsung T5 SSD. The SD card I was using was a 256 Lexar. So what I was able to do was just plug both of them into my camera, back up that SD card. And then while that was backing up, I then shot the second half so that when I came back into the changing room after the game, the first batch of photos are backed up and done and ready. In terms of my camera settings, I actually didn't go lower than one over a thousand on my shutter speed. Looking back at it, could have been quite cool to get some motion blur in some of the pictures, but at the time kind of wasn't thinking about that and I can always achieve that look in an edit. So I stayed to anything over one over a thousand, one over 2,500 to ensure Everything was in focus, it was very sharp as I kind of wanted to capture all the action and I was using anything between F5 and F6. Once the game had finished and I took the winning team photo, which looks like this, I then backed up the second SD card and began making my selects by just going into Lightroom and hitting one on each picture I liked, which then sorted it into my rated section so that then I could go through all of those favorited photos and start editing them. I actually used one of my favorite presets I've made in quite some time called Warm Shadows. And then I had to tweak it a little bit because it was quite dark. But once I put that on, I tweaked it. I adjusted the temperature, the exposure, the contrast and clarity I had turned right down. It came out with a really, really nice grade, very quite dark, deep crushed blacks. The light was changing throughout the course of the day. So I did have to kind of tweak it depending on which ones were a lot brighter when the sun would come out or when the sun was behind clouds. So that was the preset I used throughout the entire batch of photos so that it looked very consistent. And a lot of people could tell which photos were mine compared to the other photographers because I think it has a really unique style and quite a dark, I don't want to say moody because it's been said millions of times, but quite a dark moody grade to it. I would say about two hours to an hour and a half after the game had finished, I'd already edited about 120, 130 photos, which had all been edited, sent out to the players so that they could then begin sharing them all over socials. That was my entire workflow behind the charity match. I hope this was, uh, this was helpful. Due to the amount of hype around these images, a few of the players from the match have reached out to me, which I will be making a follow-up video about. So if you don't wanna miss that, hit the subscribe button, turn the notification bell on, and be there 
for that because it's going to be a banger. So with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Peace. So in the stadium, I didn't actually have anywhere to sort of leave my camera equipment, I guess, or my laptop while the game was going on. So I actually ended up putting my Pelican in the bath. Actually, I think Rich got a picture. We'll put the picture on the screen.